One of the wildest discoveries that we've ever seen in physics is the discovery that matter not only acts like a particle, and we see protons, neutrons, electrons, they all look like particles to us, but we've also discovered that they can act like waves as well. And this is really kind of physics that's a little bit out there. And what we call this, uh, this ability to act both like a particle and a and like a wave, we call this a wave-particle duality. And because it deals with matter, it's a wave-particle duality with matter. We've probably seen before that, uh, before this that light has the same properties. And with light, we can kind of see that it acts like a wave, and it also acts like a particle. And the particle we call a, a photon. So this is going to be the matter version of that. Well, how do we know this? There's a really good experiment that we did, and it's actually going to be hopefully very familiar to you. We're going to take a double slit experiment, and we're going to shoot, instead of light at it, we're going to shoot electrons. So what we do is we take an electron source, we shine it through two slits, and we look at the pattern, and we try to guess what we're going to see. And if we have no wave-like properties, if everything acts like a particle, we expect the electrons that go through the bottom slit would give us a nice little peak, and the electrons that go through a top slit would look like a little peak. However, what happens, really, the longer that we wait, we wait, we see more marks on it. So, first thing we see, something looks like this. We see a bunch of, uh, about 10 electrons going through a slit, or two slits, and you start to see that when they hit the screen, they make a little dot. And as we get more dots, we start to start seeing a pattern will start to emerge. Once we get a lot of dots, we'll start to see that we get the classic interference pattern. We'd expect to see, without the waves uh, nature, we'd expect to see maybe these two peaks, but we see the interference of all these. So we know that, in this case, the electrons are actually interfering with each other. And it's a very interesting uh, concept, and very and some people find it a little bit troubling to actually understand this. But it's just that the particle is acting like a wave. Well, that's great and all, but we ask the next question. If it's a wave, what's its wavelength? Well, Louis de Broglie came up with a solution, and he actually did it in his PhD thesis at a pretty young age. So, smart guy, come up with some smart, uh, smart physics. So, he essentially took what Einstein did and said that because photons have par particle properties, then matter should also have wave properties. They're both all dealing with some energy, working off of what Einstein had said. And this led him to come up with the formula that the wavelength of light, or of matter, the wavelength of matter, we call this the de Broglie wavelength, because, well, give credit where it's due, is equal to Planck's constant over the momentum. And we know from our previous studies of physics, that the momentum is nothing more than the mass times the velocity. Maybe if we're dealing with relativity, we have to take into some count some corrections, but for low speeds, the momentum is just mv. And we've already seen probably h-bar being 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th meters squared kilograms per second. So, a very simple formula. Well, when we start looking at it, how do we change the wavelength? Well, the larger the mass, the larger the mass, the larger the velocity, that means the larger the momentum. And the larger the momentum is, the smaller the wavelength. So this can give us some good things that we want, and also cause us some problems. Well, once we know that we, uh, matter acts like waves, or can act like waves, we can now look at back at all the stuff of the interference, diffraction, all that stuff that we saw with wave properties of light, and see if it applies with uh, with the matter. And most of it does. And it, for the most part, everything holds out the exact same way. However, a lot of times we don't see this because the mass and the velocity are so large that, you know, if we were to look at an elephant walking through a doorframe, this is a particle through a narrow slit, that in order for us to actually see the diffraction, it would... Uh, we'd have to be very, very, very careful how we measure it, and we actually aren't able to measure this uh, because of um, other physics that goes on. But it is actually possible for large objects to diffract through this. And on a final note, um, as I saw, electrons tend to be the easiest particle that has the smallest mass, 
which gives us the largest de Broglie wavelength. So we tend to use electrons in these when we see these um, this particle or this wave nature of matter. And there's a really good example that um, you may have seen, you may not have. Uh, there's a type of microscope called a transition or a TEM, uh, transmission electron microscope, and it works literally off this process of the electrons. Instead of being particles, they act as waves, and we interfere their waves and diffract their waves through the substance. And that's actually how that microscope works. So, hopefully things weren't too bad. Hopefully we didn't shake up your worried world too much. But sometimes matter looks like waves. So good luck and. Enjoy the rest of this physics.